It is a gorgeous day here in Ontario, Canada. I can feel the sunshine. It's got to be at least two degrees or 34. That is warm where I come from. I'm very excited about this. We got the diff and rear end out of the 335 last night and I'm gonna go over a few details about how to do this job and why I'm doing this job for you guys to see. That way, if it's something that interests you, you can do it yourself. Let's get started. So here at the back of the car is a pretty strange view. There's really nothing under there anymore. Just a heat shield protecting something. And the gas tank over there on the passenger side, we've got the other heat shield down and then the axle back hanging down from the back of the car. The reason I decided to do this job now rather than doing it in the future is because we were already doing a clutch job. So the transmission's way up there, boom. And in order to get the transmission out, we had to take the drive shaft, not all the way out, but at least disconnect it from the transmission and then it kind of just hangs down. You're supposed to zip tie it to the car or whatever so it doesn't hang down. I didn't do that. I don't know if that's gonna cost me in the future, but I did not hang it up to the car. I just let it kind of droop down while we did the transmission. We put a new clutch in, put new uh, red line automatic transmission fluid in the manual trans. That's some of the only automatic transmission fluid that will actually work in a manual trans, so research that before you do it yourself. But yeah, we did the 335 IS clutch. We did an OEM flywheel, and I had all that stuff out of the car already, including my full exhaust system, which is up here with the vibrant resonators on it. And this is where it connects to the axle back. And honestly, these pegs right here, to get them out of those little rubber joints like this, these joints, it was so challenging. It was actually one of the hardest parts of the whole job and it was just simply unplugging one of these from rubber. It was very frustrating. And I just decided I didn't want to do all that stuff again. So if there was ever a time to do the LSD and subframe swap, it was now. So let's go over some of these details on why I'm doing the entire subframe instead of just an LSD. So first we can talk about just the diff itself. because That's the main reason for doing this job. This is a manual transmission diff. Gear ratio is 3.08. Past 2007, the ring gear and pinion inside the diff on a BMW rear end was welded instead of bolted. And what that means is if we open this diff up and put an LSD in, it gets a lot more complicated. I'm not sure on the specifics, but you have to be able to separate that weld and then re-weld it in a way that's balanced and works. And a lot of times it's kind of expensive and maybe more of a headache than I just really wanted to get into. So I started looking at the M3 rear diff swap. The basics required for that swap are of course the diff. You wanna go with a dual clutch trans diff because the manual trans diff out of the M3 is a 3.85 ratio. And remember ours is 3.08. That's a huge difference. Your gearing would be way out of whack. You could launch in third gear not at all what we're looking for. If you go with the DCT rear end, then you have a 3.15 gear ratio and that's pretty close. So that's what I ordered. The other thing you're going to need is the M3 axles. Now these are still 335 axles. My M3 rear end is coming in hopefully tonight and we'll be able to do some comparison with that, but you will need the M3 axles. They do fit inside the 335 um, rear, hubs so you don't have to worry about the hubs but the axles are needed to mate to the diff and then of course there's the actual drive shaft this is our 335 drive shaft and this is the m3 dct 3.15 ratio drive shaft we need to bring this drive shaft and that drive shaft together to a drive shaft shop and tell them that we need the two mated into one essentially we need that length with that flange on this prop shaft because even though this flange looks the exact same we already tested it 
and they are not the same. So you need an M3 drive shaft for sure. Once you have the M3 DCT drive shaft, the M3 DCT rear diff, and two M3 axles, you should be pretty much ready to go. So why did I go the extra mile and get the whole rear end? One of the reasons is right here. This is actually the sway bar on our cars. Hard to believe, but for a fairly high performance luxury coupe or sedan, the best they can give us is a 13 millimeter rear sway bar. With one hand, I can flex this thing just by pulling up on it a little bit. And at the ends, obviously, it's pretty weak. Now, in order to change that rear sway bar, you have to drop the subframe because it sits on top of the subframe. And a lot of people say on the forums, if you're gonna change the rear sway bar, which I wanted to do this year because I just installed my Bilstein coilovers, and I really wanna have a nice, complete suspension set up. There's my coilovers, my 034 M3 control arms, my Turner Motorsport front camber plates, all of that stuff. Wanted the sway bar for sure. But on the forums, people say, if you're gonna do the sway bar, you're gonna lose traction completely without the LSD. So I knew for sure I wanted to do the LSD and the sway bar at the same time. But then comes our next issue. These are the rear subframe bushings that are given to us on three series non-M cars. Take a look. See this space all the way around? That space right there is what causes these to do something we refer to as deflection. So essentially, when you try to put power down or turn corners, look at this, this is just my thumb, right? We gotta keep in mind, this is a 3,700 pound rear wheel drive car. But with just my thumb, I can move this backwards and forwards because of this empty space. Now, some companies like 034 Motorsport, who has sponsored this car, some companies make rear inserts that go in here and seal this void up so that this operates a lot better. However, because I'm doing an M3 rear end, I thought I would just use the M3 rear subframe bushings. And that was part of the reason that I wanted to get the whole rear end. I would get the M3 subframe bushings to replace these. I would get the M3 rear sway bar, which is out of an E93, the hard top convertible. So it's super big compared to any of the other sway bars on a three series or M3, 23 millimeters, as opposed to this one, which is 13. And I would get the diff and the axles complete. Often when you buy one axle at a time, they're fairly expensive. But when you buy the whole unit from someone selling wholesale, it's a much better deal. But then I started overthinking as I often do and it became clear to me that the M3 subframe bushings were a whole lot better than the 335 subframe bushings. But also, the aftermarket upgrade subframe bushings were night and day better than M3 subframe bushings. And if we're gonna have all of this out on the ground, out from the car, let's just do it once, do it right. So I went to Condor Speed Shop and ordered these. Solid plastic with a metal sleeve subframe bushings. If you think this is gonna increase noise, vibration, and harshness, referred to as NVH, I don't think you're thinking of it correctly because the suspension rides on the subframe. The subframe doesn't move. It's just linked to the car with four bolts, essentially. So anything that's on your actual diff or your transmission or your suspension, anything that involves movement, that's going to increase your NVH. But this is tied directly to the car. It's a non-moving part. And so essentially, I think this will be a nice upgrade, even for a daily, to put down a lot more power, to corner more confidently, and not feel like the back end is slowly following the car instead of being directly under the car at every part of the movement throughout the corner and throughout the power delivery. So thank you very much, Condor Speed Shop. We've already got a sticker under the hood for these guys. There was no sponsorship here at all. I simply found them through the forums and thought that is a product I want. I ordered them the next day. They were shipped to me within two or three days. And while I was on their site, I went ahead and ordered their upgraded poly uh, transmission mounts here as well. So they do make the plastic poly mounts to match 
the subframe bushings. I didn't want those though, because like I said, if you put it on your driveline or your suspension, you're much more likely to get some NVH. And this is more of a cruising summer enjoyment car than it is a track build. So I don't want to deal with that issue too much. Now where things get a little different for me is I have brand new coilovers. There's the actual spring with the adjustable perch and my shocks are kind of laying around. For me, in order to use these on the M3 rear end, I need to take this lower control arm, which is essentially referred to as a spring perch or lower control arm. I need to take that and swap it over to the new M3 rear end because the M3 has a different spring perch for a different suspension setup. So I'll unbolt it from here and from there and switch it over to the other rear end. Also, I do not want to run M3 brakes. I just got brand new zero mileage stop tech brakes, installed them on the car, and then took everything back off and realized I wanted to do this swap before putting it back on the road for the year. Haven't put any miles on this car at all since last November. All of these mods you've been watching on my channel and on my Instagram, I haven't put any seat time in the car at all. So I'm really excited to see how it all comes together. It's all being done at once. So I can swap over my brakes as long as I use these hubs. If I go with the M3 hubs, then what'll happen is, here we go. This is where the caliper carrier connects to the car. The mounting points will be wrong on the M3 unit. So we will have to unbolt basically everywhere that connects to the rear end and uh, swap it over so that we can fit our 335 brakes. Now you might think that's dumb, but do some research and you'll notice that the M3 rear calipers are really no benefit over the 335 rear calipers. And I'm quite happy with my stop tech setup anyway. So I don't really wanna do that. Once the new rear end is here, we will start getting some of these parts swapped over. We will put the Condor Speed Shop rear subframe bushings in the new subframe, and we will start bolting it back up to the car, connecting the e-brake cables, which are a nasty part of this job to get out of the old hubs. We did manage to get them out, but now we gotta put them back in when we put the subframe back up. Connect the brake lines. What else was there? Connect the ABS sensors and the wheel speed sensors and essentially we will be good to go. Then we have to get the drive shaft made up, put the drive shaft in, put the exhaust back on and start sending this car down the road. I'm looking at one to two weeks for getting this back on the road and I'm super excited about it. Thank you for watching all the way through. I hope you're enjoying the build. I definitely wanna make this the cleanest, nastiest, fastest Atlantic Blue 335 around. The color is so unique, it just pulls on my heartstrings and I want it to be as nasty on the inside as it looks mild and tame on the outside with that beautiful color. Thanks a lot and I will see you guys next time. You weren't just gonna leave without liking, subscribing or commenting on this video, were you? Good, please leave me a comment, tell me what you think, ask me questions if you have them, like this video, share it if you want to and make sure you subscribe to the channel so I can share more cool stuff like this and get more sponsorships from more cool parts more cool companies put the parts on the car and tell you guys how they work so you can improve your own vehicles and so you can learn about working on cars at the same time. Peace.